Hello. Hello everybody, I hope you're well. I just wanted to start this video by saying a massive thank you to everybody who donated to the fundraising idea that we explained in the previous episode. It's been a fantastic response. We're up to a time of recording, I think about just under £400, which is where we were hoping to be, by some miracle, by the end of the year, let alone after one video. So it's been absolutely fantastic. So thank you very, very much. Now, we did it through Super Thanks, two reasons. One, ease. You're watching this on YouTube. It's a YouTube thing. You can just click it if you wanted to when you go from there. Secondly, transparency. Anyone would be able to go through the comments and see who's donated, tot it all up, and it's all there. So we can't, there's no discretion at the end of the year. However, we didn't realise that YouTube take a bit of a chunk of it, let's say, and put it in their back pocket. Now, that's unfortunate, but don't worry, we're going to make up every penny that they take. So whatever you donated, that full amount, and we promise you this, will go to the Birmingham Children's Hospital at the end of the year in the form of Christmas presents for the kids that happen to be there. Now, we need your help. Is there a better way of doing this? There must be. Uh, is, is just giving uh, is, uh, another website, another, uh, uh, another way of doing it? Someone's gonna take a cut, I expect, but who is the most, who, who's the best one to go is? We need a transparency there as well. We need people to be able to see what's in there. And then, obviously, the lesser cut as possible would be nice. So by all means, if you've got any recommendations, please put it in the comments. Email us, our email address is in our bio, and we'll go from there. So thank you very, very much. Now you may notice, or not, that we bought some new hoodies from Tough Stuff Workwear, because we like their stuff. And my cousin's company, Full Range Creative, have had them embroidered for us. Now we've also had, for when the Weather gets a little bit better. I've got some Paolo shirts done as well. Look at that, that is absolutely fantastic. Very happy with that. Um, his company prints anything you could possibly want to from workwear, brochures, uh, exhibition stands. If you want it printed, he can do it. And it's all done in the most sustainable way, all good for the environment, all that sort of stuff. So if that's something that you're into, by all means, get on his website. The link is in the description. I'll put it on screen now as well. As I say, it's also in the description. So go from there. It really is top quality stuff. We're happy. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, he's, he's put his logo on his thing with the YouTube. That's a bit, uh, oh yeah, throbber clobber we're calling it. And we're happy with it. So then, let's get on with it. Right then, well, as you can see, I've come out of the way a little bit just so you can hear me. It's very noisy over there. Two trap barrows and that digger. As you can see now, the importance of maintaining this ramp going up there to get these barrows up and down, it's been vital, which is why in the previous episode, I explained that we haven't dug it all out in one, else it's best to, more cost effective to. Concrete only has to come once, a pump only has to come once, all that sort of stuff, but that ramp there, as I say, is vital. So it needs to be kept in place. And to do that, we are not touching this bank just yet. We are going along the back of the house and exposing all that. And we're gonna see what we find. Hopefully, the concrete footing that we found in the previous episode to this, if you haven't seen it, this is the video that you're looking for. Uh, runs throughout, it would be lovely if it was like that, all the way along the back of the house, one nice straight line, that'll be ace, because we haven't got to go to the bottom of that footing, our floor level, well our dugout floor level is what we need to get down to, is a, a part way down that footing, which means no undermining, which would be perfect, but we shall see, who knows. So we're going to continue digging out, I'll get a bit closer, We'll have a look and hopefully what we find will be good news. Well, there's a couple of well-known phrases that crop up far too often in the building game and they are worst case scenario and don't count your chickens before they're hatched. They've both come into play here quite heavily. I'll turn you around and I'll show you what we've found. On this side of the build, and I'll put it on screen now before all this was built so you can see it a bit more clearly. When we dug out, we found a very substantial concrete footing, a very welcome sight. Now, I don't know if you can see it there, but it starts from there and it goes all the way up to there. That's one bit of concrete. And then it changes here into something different, but it's still rock solid all the way across. Uh, and then we've obviously dug our foundation out. That's, that's down a metre. And then we've excavated underneath the footing, uh, concreted for the foundation, and then 
concreted the gap between the two. So now from there, all the way down to the bottom of our trench, there's probably about 1700, 1800 solid concrete all the way down. Perfect. Now when we found that substantial slab, we thought, brilliant. All this has got to be underpinned anyway, but I mean, it's minimal. Look at the size of it. You know what I mean? That gap there, it'll be ace. And there's no reason to suggest that that footing doesn't go all the way across on one level. I mean, why wouldn't it? The house isn't on a slope on a hill or anything like that. It's not a substantial one anyway. Not going this way, coming down, down the back of the garden, yes, but not this way. It's all right. So we thought we'd dig this side out and it should be the same, shouldn't it? Well, check that out. How different is that? Now I've never known a house differ so much in concrete depths. Now there are many houses out there and mine is one of them that have no concrete at all because of when they were built, standard practice, whatever. But when we saw that, we thought, right, why wouldn't it be all the way across? And it quite heavily isn't. <laughs> so going back to our worst case scenario, we knew it, underpinning had to be done and it's all part of the structural survey that was given to us by the customer. So it's all been accounted for. However, when we saw that, going back to don't get your chickens before they're hatched, we thought, ah, it'd be nice, minimal, nothing to worry about. It's even something that we can uncover now when we get to this stage and then address this a little bit further down the line. Well, we can't now, we need to address it a bit sooner because we can't leave it like that. Now, just because we've dug that out doesn't mean the whole thing is gonna fall down. That is not how buildings work, but it needs addressing, doesn't it? For our own peace of mind, if nothing else. So as I say, it's all on the drawings. I will talk you through them now and we'll get on with it. Well, it's quite unbelievable, isn't it? Because that footing down there, or the concrete in that footing down there is about, well, I think it's, it's that thickness, isn't it? So what's that? That's 500, give or take, just over. Uh, and then it goes down to, what's that? 200, just under, seemingly. I mean, it's not as random as I first thought it was. I mean, there's a clear step up there. There's a brick on edge here that have helped get back to gauge. But anyway, it is where it is and it needs addressing. So I'll put on screen now what the structural engineer has specified that we do. Um, and I'll show you now in real terms. Now, I haven't got the numbers in front of me as I'm talking now, so they might differ from the ones that are on screen. But it'll all be done to those drawings as and when we do it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna sequentially dig it out. So we're going to miss a meter, in which case from that point there, that red mark there, to the corner of the house, that's one meter. We're leaving that as you see it now in situ. And then we are going to come across a meter, which brings us to roughly there. And we're going to dig that out. So that's going to go. And as specified, it's got to go in 400, uh, top of my head, 475 mil from the face of that brick. So we'll, we'll call it about 550 from this, this concrete, as this concrete is, it's easy to measure. So it's gonna go about 500 in from there. Let's say 600 for argument's sake. 600 million from there. So all that's gotta come out. So obviously it's a meter, like I've just said, and it's gotta go down under the slab, as you can see on the drawings, but this is the slab level now. So we're gonna hardcore on top of this uh, and then concrete insulate it all on top of the ground as you see it now. So at this level, it's going to be dug out I believe it's 850 mil from the face of that wall. So let's just say 800 from here, for argument's sake. There we go. And this area goes down 225 millimeters. So that gets dug out 225. That goes back in 600 from here, and it's a meter wide. And then from there, we need to put some reinforcements and rebar in and then pour that shutter that then and then pour it in one so that is one reinforced cast slab that goes completely under or surpasses the thickness of the, this wall which is 225 mil 
that's nine inch wall no cavity in old money basically and then that is basically that but we don't just do one at a time because we've missed a meter we're going to dig out a meter we're then going to miss another meter excuse me if i go off screen here for a second another meter is there for argument's sake and then we dig that one out and then we miss a meter and then we dig another meter out. Now we're not gonna go down the, the face of the, uh, the, the, the complete face of the back of the house just yet. That isn't dug out yet and there's no need to do it. So we will be digging that out and then digging that one out in one, reinforcing it and then mixing the concrete and then pouring it in one. And then that is basically it. Once that's gone off then, take the shuttering down and then the bits that you've missed, i.e. this bit, then that gets dug out to exactly the same specification and then that bit gets dug out and then the bits you missed all the way down so when it's all finished and it's all gone off you've got one continuous reinforced concrete wall underneath the foundations of the house that's the theory that will be the practice as well that's what we're going to do now if the footing was where it was like that down there the bottom of it would have come to around about here in which case i mean we could have dug this out and carried on and and not really worried about it really but as it is it doesn't look great does it it's not going to go anywhere it can't go anywhere but we're going to address it a little bit sooner i.e we're going to start tomorrow so we've got the materials coming tomorrow i've got to go and pick some shuttering ply up uh, and then we'll get started and then we'll do all that and then you are currently sat on the inspection chamber all that can go as well to make all this nice and easy to move around in and uh yeah We'll start from there. So tomorrow's a new day. It's a shame that we found this the way it is. I mean, it's unbelievable, isn't it? The way from what it goes to to what it is over here, it's quite something. But you never know until you know. And as I say, don't count them until they're patched. So we'll get crack on with that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. I've just come out the way just so you can hear me because obviously it's very noisy down there next to those machines. You all there, Michael? Hello. He said hello if you go near him. Uh, as you can see, that one's dug out. That's all ready to the spec that I showed you earlier on in the episode, which, which was yesterday for us. It's all a bit more clear now, isn't it, of what we've got to do. Just got to wait for the materials to arrive. We've got to get like a metal cage in there, then we'll start concreting it and we'll get all that sorted for today. Now it looks like the house could fall down at any moment, doesn't it? To like the untrained eye, so to speak. But that looks as solid as ever to me. I've got no problems with that at all. As I said in the previous episode, the ground that we've got here is perfect for it. We couldn't have asked for anything better, really. Yes, it looks very soft to dig out, but in place it is solid. And as we lower that we get right at the bottom of that one there to the right, it is uh, it's, it's coming out in rocks. You have to change the bucket three or four times to break into it and I've had to get in there and, and break it out by hand. So I've got no issues there at all. I just want to quickly show you if I can zoom in. This existing soil pipe that we're going to rip out now in order for us to dig all the way across and then we'll replace it at the end of the day. There's some magic numbers involved with soil pipes and we'll go into all this in a separate episode where where it comes down, as you can see there, into it, it's got to go into a nice sweeping 90. That isn't. That's as right angle as you can get it. And then into a gradient of 1 in 40. For every 40 inches horizontal, it goes down 1 inch vertically. Well, that is 4 inches in 40. 100 mil for every metre that goes across. Which is, according to the rule books, a big no-no, yet it hasn't blocked, it never has done, and it's working fine, so it just goes to show that if you can't get those magic numbers, it will work without them. That's not to say that you do it on purpose, but if you, if you can't, then they work. But anyway, as I say, that's a different episode. Right, we're going to rip that out now, and then we'll continue digging. What a beautiful day it's turned out to be. Good day for a bit of concreting. So I'll just show you what we've done here then. We've dug, I oh know I'm in the, in the shade, so it's a bit difficult to see, but we've dug both holes out again to the spec that we talked about earlier on. And I've got some mesh at the bottom of it. And I've got two bits of mesh 
in the upright section and I've just, this is that soft, sandy, sandy clayey, whatever it is, I've, um, I've hammered those bits into this side and then the one in front of it, I you can see there's two, that one goes into that side just so then when we excavate, when this concrete has gone off, when that's excavated, little bits will sticking out there and those little bits will sticking out there which means then we can join them into the other rebar that will be in that side and it will become one big mesh. Not that it's that really important to do that simply because with all the anchor resins now that you can get we could be able to drill through and, and bolt it all in and as I say resin it in whatever so um, it's not as big as deal but I thought it means it's so easy to do. Why not? So what we're going to do now then is get this bit of shutter in ply, which is cut to size, put it up against, prop it all up, get it as strong as we possibly can, because there's going to be a lot of weight pushing up against that. And then some of it then is going to flow underneath to form the pad. Hopefully, we are hoping that it's going to um, clog itself up, which will help us, which will enable us, I should say, to fill that up, and then we'll do that last. And then that then, will be it we'll get it up as high as we can obviously we won't be able to fill it in its entirety simply because well it's impossible we'll have to fill it from the very top in order to do that and pour it in um, which obviously we can't do but it is specified on the drawings this we leave a gap and then that bit is dry packed at a later stage or well, i.e tomorrow so we're going to get this in whether we get that one in today we're not too sure simply because we're going to get the digger back down here and then continue with this and there's no point in concreting that if all oh, that's going to fall into it but we'll see whether we can board it over don't know time will tell but as for now the ballast has arrived we'll get on with it right well we didn't film that because who wants to time lapse of chucking concrete behind the board but that is how far it's got and that is what's left of three ton of ballast just to get up to that height. We can't get any further than that because it's just slumping down and we'll never make the proper connection between the new concrete and the old. So we'll let that go off overnight and then we'll pack that tomorrow. Um, but that shuttering can stay for quite a while, I reckon, because it's uh, it's bulging a bit. I haven't done any shuttering concrete for quite a while and it's always oh, surprising how much weight, well, there's three ton on there is, but look at the bulge on that. Not the first time I've said that, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, we'll leave it. Now then, we're just going to take this inspection chamber down, as modelled by my glamorous assistant. Hello, Michael. Said soil pipe. We're going to get that gone, get that gone completely, dig this out for the rest of the day, and then our connection to keep the house up and running uh, of a night will be from there to uh, just the other side of that, just in plastic, because that is redundant. Um, that is where the, sorry to whiz you around, is where that thing from the ACO from the front of the house went into. So that's redundant for now. So uh, so that's that. We'll just thought I'll show you this, that if you've got so-called rising damp in your house or subsidence or something like that, then this could be the cause. This is a classic example of a cracked pipe. Now. There's water, as you can see, constantly coming out of that. And there has been since day one. That could be something as simple as a dodgy flush valve on the toilet that isn't shutting it off properly. So there's a constant trickle of water going down the toilet and it results in a constant trickle of water underground. Now, we've got concrete here, but if this is for argument's sake at my house, where there is no concrete, that could erode the ground away underneath and the inevitable happens, things start to drop. Or you'll have a damp patch in the inside the, the house somewhere, some corner, wherever, and you can't get to it. You're wondering what it is. Oh, it's rising damp. It's coming out the floor. Well, it could. It probably isn't. It probably is something like that. And as you can see, where that connection has been made, it's all been compoted in or mortared in, depending on what time, part of the country you're from. But here, there's none. There's nothing. Doesn't look like there ever was either. So that's been dripping for God knows how many years. But there we have it. So, just goes to show, if you've got an issue in the house, chances are you've got a drain outside next to it and that's what's happening. Anyway, we'll get this down, get it gone, 
and we'll get some digging done. Well, as you've just seen, managed to get this wall down, all come down in one piece, which is beautiful, and it's exposed what we're dealing with in terms of this pathway. It was always a voyage into the unknown. What's it made up of? Is it going to hold up? Can we do our digging and still have the machines going up and down it and it'll all be safe? I have got a scaffolder on call or on a high alert. He came round the other week and he's, uh, he's had a look at it. If all if acne's bracing up, you reckon he can do it. So worst case scenario, that's what will happen. However, confidence is growing. You see the concrete slab there forming the path. You can see just there where there used to be a concrete step being below that pad. And then below that there's the concrete slabs, which they've just gone straight over the top of. And then those concrete slabs are bedded on what feels like a lean mix of concrete or at least a strong mix of sharp sand just over there so confidence is growing in it and as you can see the trap barrows are going up and down and uh, there's no issues it's all right it's got to keep an eye on it keep well out of the way keep to the back of it we'll keep going keep monitoring it not be stupid and hopefully it will be all right this shuttering's been a bit of a pain in the derriere in order to get it in there to pack it up so it makes full contact with the original concrete and bracing it so it doesn't belly out and also leaving it practical so we can actually work around it and you can brace anything up we will never be able to get to it you need to leave room it's proven a bit difficult but we're all right that one's all right now that bellied out horrendously and as you saw earlier we chiseled it all back to get it flush it does need a bit more taking off we don't want to lose any more room you see We'll take it back flush with the concrete all the way down. This one's pretty good. We'll expose that next week once it's all gone off. Maybe have to do the same, but we'll be all right. I'll put a bit of footage up of that taking that one down. All the steam coming off it, it generates its own heat whilst it's going up while it's curing. So, so yes, yeah, so we've got no issues with that. But as I say, it's been awkward. However, we've devised a plan that when we do the other bits, i.e. the corner, that bit and that bit there, when, we, uh, when that comes to concrete, we're going to do it in a different way and it's going to be a lot easier, but we'll come to that in a future episode. Might even be the next one, but we shall see. In terms of this bay, I said it in a, previously, that bay is coming out completely and going flush to the back of the house. So this footing will be redundant. So we're not going to do anything with that, obviously, because by the time we took that out, it's got to go. So that's that. So our concrete might finish there and then there'll be nothing then until the massive amount of concrete we've already got over there. So that will be our last one, I reckon. So it will be completely underpinned from that corner, with that corner in itself, and then from there, all the way across the back. Now, when it comes to taking this bay out, 
and getting it flush to this. That door is going in a normal size one, that's obviously a little stubby thing. Uh, a full size door, so we'll probably have to put another concrete footing in, but a lot brand new, but flush with the original house, and then build that up, because this here, that bay window is coming out, and then that's going to be uh, a door onto this, what, onto the roof of this, which will then become like a balcony, like a terrace area. So that'll be lovely, especially for the daylight today. Um, so yeah, so we'll come to that. We'll come to that as and when, as and when. But there we go. So yes, all happy with the way that's uh, with the way that's going. So there we have it. Just leave it to the lads now to dig that out. I can't remember whether I said or not, but it's got to go, we've got to dig out 450 mil past the building line, straight the way down, then our trench is then in line with that. This bit's already done, so it's just this bit along here. Get it concreted and get it built as soon as possible. And if the weather, it's a bit grey over there, but look at that. A few more days like this, please. That'll be lovely. Then we'll be out of the ground. The diggers will be off hired, all this will be level and stoned, and we'll be out of the mud, and that will be lovely. We've done the dugging out of the footing, and the building inspector has been and gone, and she's happy, so the concrete's booked for tomorrow. So what we're doing now is utilising the machine, getting the garden all flattened, ready to be hardcored, hopefully maybe tomorrow. Do a bit of drainage tomorrow as well, which we're going to the next episode. But for the concrete, we have got to shut her off this underpinning. Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, Nettis? Sun shining. I'm not soaked. I'm not covered in mud, so it's wonderful. It's beautiful, isn't it? It really is. Very, very nice. Can I have some more? So, what we're doing here, we've dug a channel out at the bottom, and we've dug, dug this channel out all the way up there. As you can see, all my shadows in the way. You see that there? That's just so the board goes into that, so when the concrete goes behind it to fill or partially fill this, we're not going to do it all in one. Really? We'll never be able to. Yeah, it's about there. The width of the board, basically, uh, 1200 or 1220, whatever. To go in there, so but the weight of that concrete then will push the board against this and it can't go anywhere. And then the principle is the same down here with that little slot. And then we're going to effectively concrete a bolt, basically, bolt it to our concrete that we filled in earlier on, and that is right to the very top. And we are extremely happy with how that's all been packed in. And we're good, that's obviously, to use a word, cavernous behind there. So as we just mentioned, we're not gonna be able to do that in one. What we're hoping to do in one, all by the shouting, is... Just move this board. Yep, is this one. There we go. To fill that, what Rich done earlier is get behind it and draw basically the outline of this hole, the outline of that, onto the back of there. So now what we can do, when we when we put that on, and we're going to treat it like it's a zombie attack. Oh, you know, they always board up the windows in them films, put the sheet over it, and then uh, brace it, brace it. This six by two here, straight the way across twice, top and bottom. But because he's marked it, we'll be able to cut a little hole there. And that's where the concrete is going to go into because we're having this pumped in. The concrete's coming tomorrow, as I say, to pump it into the footings. So we're utilising that, making our life easier, not hand dig it like we did with those. That took for ages and it was a bit of a nightmare. So cut the hole in and pump it straight in. And then that then should be it. So we'll wait and see. So yes, we're happy with that. It's big, isn't it? I think that's 3.7 metres from its tallest point to the bottom of the footing. So, but there we go. Anyway, very happy the way this ground's turned out. It was best case scenario, other than the worst case scenario, when we actually found the concrete footing over there. But it's good, it's all good. That path is not going anywhere. Everything's holding up lovely. The track barrows and the machine have been up there many times. It is rather, rather lovely. And we'll go into why it's holding up so well. Ah, sorry, we'll do it now if you can hear me. This ground here, we're having to break it out 
This is solid. It's, it's fairly carvable down there. If my glamorous assistant will demonstrate. Fair enough, that's concrete. Bridge. Yeah. Just, um, just smash a bit of the hard stuff there for us, please. Look at that. So we're about to get the breakers in. Look how tough that is. It is solid. So, that ain't going anywhere. Now, the rest of the, the dig wasn't like that. All around here was quite pleasurable. This, this has been a nightmare, but we want this to be a nightmare, don't we? Because we wanted that to stay up. So, it's all worked out extremely well. Right then, we'll get some concrete in. Right, it's the following day, and it's a bit of a busy one. First and foremost, Rishi's trying his best at Anglo-Asian relations. Typical Brit, if you can't speak the language, just speak the same language, but louder. <laughs> uh, right, the concrete is back, as you can see. Well, the pump is, the concrete's not here yet. All that is set up, coming all the way down. The lads reckon, as in the, the pump lads reckon it would go straight down and straight through as it is. It's all set up. This is their set up. So, so there we go. And you can see the reinforcement in that. It's all reinforced behind. Cut that hole up. Mick and Rich brace those by shuttering up earlier on. Best they could. It's pulled in nice. And that really is it. Acros the loss. So we're hoping that'll hold. That is the nerve wracking bit. The rest is just filling a trench. That's all that is. No issues. Now, another reason why it's a busy day today, we're also doing the drainage. We've just dug all that out. All that will be in this week's episode. Um, we've simplified it a bit. It's not as complicated. It's only, it can only be so complicated, but we'll go for all that at the levels, how it's all worked out. We'll do all that in the next episode. This one, we'll just we'll stick, to, stick to the main structure for now. Then we'll carry on from there. So we'll let them lads carry on. We'll get our level set up with the layers and everything. We'll wait for the concrete and then we'll get it poured. Well, obviously the concrete truck is here and we are pumping into there. A little bit coming out there by the look of it. So we might have to just get some insulation down there if that doesn't clog. How far are we up? Oh, we're there, aren't we? Beautiful. That's it, yeah. Excellent, well that's done. That was... That was without drama, wasn't it? Sound? Now, obviously, there's going to be a gap there, probably about 200 mil of, uh, of no concrete, but we need to give ourselves enough room in order to get that packed because even if there's a five mil gap between all that concrete and the foundation, that concrete's not doing anything, it needs to be packed up. And if we fill that up as far as we can, we'll never get it to the point of it actually being completely filled, doing it this way. So if we leave have a bigger gap, that gives us more space, more scope to get stuff in after and make a, make a better job of it. So that now is going to be emulated over that one. That's the big one. That's hopefully going to go to the top of that board there. Yes, it's going to come through there, but hopefully when this fills up, that will equalise or we'll shove some it down there. We'll have a look. We'll see. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll just have to leave it lower and fill this up, which means more work on that side. Well, whatever. It is, it is what it is. We, we, want, we want to connect this to that, so we, we want a gap there. But there we have it. There we have it. Righty out then. We'll let them fill it up. And we'll come back to it in a bit. Well, they've been and gone. It's all tied up outside, as they always do. They're brilliant. And Mick's given it this little tamper. We've leveled it all off with the laser level. And uh, we got given this by the fella who does our underfloor heating liquid screed. He, had, he wanted a new one, so he just gave us the old one. So we keep it for doing this exact thing. And it is brilliant. If, ever, if you do a lot of concrete in footings or whatnot, I recommend you get one. I know you've got to keep it somewhere, but it's obviously aluminium, super light. 
Well, it's really heavy. It's brilliant. It's a song, yeah. Excellent. And that will be that. We didn't get as much behind that as we'd liked. Simply because they don't like adding on to the pipe. When the pipe comes down, they don't like to add on to it. So they did. They always did the furthest point away first. But we wanted them to concrete this bit first so it creates a bit of a pressure going that way and then it equalises that way and then you could go a little bit further up than what we wanted to. But we got, don't leave it off, we've got a, what's that you reckon? 700 maybe? 800 yeah. to make up. Yeah. We can always keep that in, get some more ballast and concrete straight on top of it. Can indeed, one it's still green, yeah. Maybe. We're going to have the reinforcement there as well, aren't we? Yeah. Maybe. I'll give that back a bit. Um, yeah, there you go. Beautiful. And this one is done. You can't see that. Great footage. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, it's a lovely evening. At the end of a lovely day. Dry, all week's been dry. We've got one more day left to make it a clean sweep. Five out of five, no rain. Fingers crossed. Uh, that drains is in, that'll be in next week's episode. Concrete is in, which makes it even more amazing that it didn't rain. But that's in down there. I've stepped it down the course here simply because this ground here slopes down a bit. So to get it level, I would have been out the ground there and made a right mess. So to step it down the course, I'll sort that out uh, when we come to build it, which it may be a little bit tomorrow. Who knows? Definitely in the next episode. But I've stayed late because it was getting dark, which worked to my favour. I've got to work out where this wall's going, where's the building line. Now, normally you'd get string line i won't bore you with it but string line off the building continue it down and build off that oversimplified but that's basically what you do i've got no building to take a line off not practically anyway so what do i do well richard before he left was very very kindly allowed me to use his 360 laser level which sets out a perfectly 90 degree angled two laser lines left and right which is basically what we need and because it was getting dark and it's dry not built for rain outside use or anything like that so uh, yeah you've got to be careful a few of you do ask every time he gets his house and puts it in a video people ask what mate that is i will get it out in a sec get it up show yeah and uh i'll put a link to it in the description uh as we always do anyway so we've got laser line going that way, laser line going this way. Now it's took some doing, but as you can see, and this is why I wanted to do it while it was getting dark so I can actually see it. That green line there is just kissing, and you can see it. See it there? Just kissing that block work. And then, so we know that one's right. Then if I come over here, I've got a few coarse in the footings and it's just kissing those just up there just and it's a little bit out on the bottom ones but it is touching those top ones now there's no great surprise that that's out because it's the footings it's all underground and what have you but then it dawned on me that because it's a laser it's shining up here too because it's far enough back I can get a reading up here, so I've took the bead off, chipped away a bit of the plaster. You can just see it there, look. Just kissing the corner of the building. Just there. So we're happy at that. That laser line is obviously perfectly straight. It's not saying that the building that you're shining it up is. So at worst case scenario, that is an extremely happy medium so there we go that's that all i've got to do now i will just mark that i can 
some trowel marks in if I wanted to but I'm going to just put some screws in along that line just so I could put a string line on them tomorrow and start to work off it now it's not that it's not showing up on camera the laser line there isn't there you can't see it but in this case kind of scenario if I get myself a piece of wood he says looking for one is that one give me two seconds there we go a piece of wood or a block or whatever you can use your laser or uh, your level see no line no line no line line there it is and just mark it where the line meets the concrete and that's that just to show you that again further down nothing there look boom there it is just mark that and then join up the dots and away you go beautiful right then I'll get that sorted we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see what we can do to finish the week off well not want to blow my own trumpet but uh, take a look at this yeah oh you're loving that aren't you oh you're loving it I'm showing you, I'm showing everybody. I'm as surprised as you. Right, as promised, this lies level. It's a, 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 a hue pa, hue pa? Bump, yeah, yeah, it's one of them. All right, links in the description. Uh, I'll just put an Amazon link to it. Well, if it's on Amazon, well, I'll find something. We're not affiliated to any selling sites or anything like that. We just find a, the easiest link to find and put it onto the to the stuff so there we go uh you get you don't get this case um but it's two rechargeable batteries um receiver that's the battery for that a charger for it and uh, and there you go and one thing i'll let rich go into a bit more detail on one of um uh, in a future episode but any issue with the battery got in contact with a company and they were fantastic out of warranty a couple of years old Anything could have happened to it, no questions asked, boom, sent him a new one. So you'll go into more detail with that, no doubt, in a future episode, but very, very good. There you go. Right then, on to tomorrow. Well, we asked for a nice day and we ain't half got one. Beautiful. That is five out of five. Seldom seen, even in the summer. But there we go. We got all this down, as you saw in that time lapse. We are officially out of the mud, sort of. There's a lot to go over there in terms of the soak away, which we'll go into in the next episode. Um, but in terms of working, we're out of it. I don't know if you can hear that, but it is crunchy underfoot, not, not slippy, sloppy, horrible stuff. And if I walk in a straight line, my boots stay on, which is always welcome. Uh, right then, going on to yesterday's concrete. It's gone off of use, and it is beautifully flat and level. Let's get a Doppler, man. Just I know you can make them in bits of timber and whatnot, but do it, you know what I mean? You either buy one, make one. In this instance, leaning over there with a heavy bit of a, a bit of timber. They're a little bit tricky, but it's the way to do it. Anyway, that's gone off as well. Or going off. None of it's truly off yet, obviously. So in the next episode. You'll see us fill that up, get it all packed up. That's the same over there as well. That's all up to up to the height that you can see. We'll get that done. And then from that point there, then all the way across, it will all be reinforced concrete. Beautiful. 
and that is ice and a waking knacker considering from there to there was ground now it's concrete excellent the company did be doing the tankings come out today talk us through a lot of stuff give us some diagrams and everything so we're all happy with the way that's going we'll go into that in a future episode as well so now really we've got to hope this weather holds up and go for it and start building only issue being is that I'm going to order the compo and have it delivered so rain or shine this is getting built so hopefully it won't rain because if it does we're out in it but there we go right then we'll leave that one there thank you very very much for watching don't forget if any of you know of a better way of sorting out this uh, an alternative to super thanks just so whoever we do use or what company or what website takes less of a cut the most cost effective way of doing it please let us know but rest assured anything you do donate we will make up so every single penny that you do will be spent at the end of the year at the hospital blah 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 so don't be put off don't forget you need anything printing full range creative that's the company for you get in touch with them as i say their website link to it is in the description any questions put them in the comments and we'll let you know if it's a little bit detailed or you need a detailed response we will put it into the next video and we'll go for it from there so until then thank you very much for watching have a great week and we'll see you soon Holding nice.